panel chair, panel members, um, fellow researchers, and guests, um, good evening. So um, first of all, I'd like to thank the channel for inviting me as a, as a guest speaker for this workshop. Um, I would also like to thank, take this opportunity to thank the panel for funding my project titled Destined for Conflict and Implicit Theory Approach to Relational Motive and Dispute Resolution Practices. Um, this is a work um, um, with my collaborators, long-term collaborators, Melody Chow and Pam Si Hui. And um, so before I begin my sharing um, of um, my preparation of the grant proposal, I just like to emphasize that um, my experiences like um, stems mainly from my background and training as a behavioral scientist. And so um, a lot of it like uh, may not necessarily be applicable to your disciplines. So um, in preparing a grant proposal for your disciplines, I suppose like there's a lot of disciplinary, um, discipline specific knowledge and uh, requirements. Okay, so uh, tonight I just want to focus on three major areas um, when I prepare my proposal. Um, the first area is like, a uh, I would usually like to bring relevance um, to the Hong Kong context uh, um, here, uh, or like uh, elsewhere would be relevance to the local context. Um, the second area is about um, building a programmatic research. And the third area would be the practical issues in preparing um, a proposal. Okay, um, the first area, um, relevance in Hong Kong. Um, so this is basically my very personal preference and probably intuition. Um, so um, throughout my academic career, um, when I prepare grant proposal, I usually uh, would choose um, a topic uh, or proposal that would be relevant to the local context. Um, so um, the the very um, basic thing would be like to answer um, a problem um, in a local context or to address some concerns um, in, in um, uh, uh, that would be concern for people um, and in this concept would be the Hong Kong society. And uh, so uh, take my current proposal as an example. Uh, as you can see, it's about re conflict resolution. So um, the problem I'm addressing here in this proposal is about the adoption of alternative dispute resolution. So ADR, okay, short form. So uh, but what is ADR? So basically it refers to um, mediation and also arbitration practices. Um, so um, it's actually like that the practices of ADR actually are quite low in Hong Kong, relatively speaking. Uh, it's quite common like elsewhere, um, and for example, like in, in the um, Western cultures or, or countries. Um, so, but uh, the adoption is like not so common. So um, the Hong Kong government actually tries to promote the usage of ADR practices. And several years ago, we even see TV commercials uh, um, that promotes like you know such practices. So um, when I prepare my proposal, um, I um, uh, borrow statistics, uh, facts, and also specific information to support um, uh, the relevance of uh, this uh, project. So you can see the citation here: Policy Address Hong Kong 2008. And uh, so, but the problem can be a very local context, uh, but sometimes like it, it may not certain projects certain topics may not be you know so obviously relevant um, so I think I, I in my other proposals I, I will um, make sure like if the problem is not so obviously related to the local context I will make use of the model or the solution uh, to create the relevance and then um, make sure I spell it out in my proposal that so that the reviewers and the panel will see the relevance. So uh, it could be in terms of the model. Um, so for instance, like you know, in my current proposal, uh, it's about lay people's beliefs about conflict. So uh, lay people's mean everyone. So it would be relevant in Hong Kong. And uh, or like in terms of solution, um, in um, in my methodological approach, um, I will uh, collect data from um, 
uh, local participants, like Hong Kong people or Chinese people. So at least that speaks to you know like people like in Hong Kong, so or the uh, society at large. Okay, so that's the first um, area. Okay, um, here comes the second area, uh, which I will refer it to as the um, most challenging part of the proposal of the whole proposal preparation process. Um, so, um, and then um, I also um, tend to um, build a programmatic research um, in the proposal. So that means um, I will try to come up with a large theoretical framework that will help us um, at least formulate a few studies, interconnected studies uh, that will address like the problems uh, on hand. And uh, so the very first box, you can see that. Um, so like come up the new and innovative ideas. And uh, uh, I must say that like this is the most difficult part for myself and my team. I don't know whether it applies to you, but uh, to come up with something new is really difficult. Um, especially that would um, give some theoretical contributions uh, and, and to solve the practical problems. And uh, so, but that once we overcome that, uh, which, I'll which I'll talk about um, in a minute, um, so then uh, the, the next part in a way, like coming up methods or studies, empirical studies, to test the hypothesis or the objectives um, would be relatively less challenging. Uh, from my view, uh, based on my um, uh, training, so those would be the technical details. But I can see that um, based on the reviewers' comments, they do see not they, they assess not just on the theoretical and practical contributions, but they also look at the details. They would judge uh, us on whether we can complete the project, the studies, and also whether these uh, methods were really able to test our hypothesis. Okay, so uh, in my current proposal, I devised four empirical studies to test my hypothesis. Uh, one important point I want to emphasize here is that these four studies build on each other, um, and they also inform each other. So um, I would have the first study um, basically establish a um, simple main effects, and then the second study looked at the boundaries of such effects, and then the third study to look at the explanatory mechanisms. Um, and I also uh, usually use multi-method approaches, uh, meaning I would use like different methods to help um, uh, address the methodological concerns. So in this proposal, I use several experimental studies, and I also use a survey study uh, to complement the pros and cons of each kind of methodology. Okay, um, so the last area is really about the um, logistic and practical uh, uh, issues in preparing a grant proposal. Um, I I think the audience is like quite diverse uh, based on what I see, you know, in attendance like outside. Um, so um, here the, uh, the the sharing is mainly on like quite general. Um, but uh, I tend to start preparing quite early. I don't know whether this considered early. Okay, so uh, the internal deadline is January in my university. So I'll start talking about the idea actually like, uh, in October. Uh, really sat down in several meetings with my teammates, and, and usually the first one or two like are not so useful. And then so um, we spend like maybe. Um, a month or so really nailed down to um, the theories and also the conceptual models. Um, and then the next three months or so, starting from like early November, uh, we'll be um, doing the real work, digging into um, like, for instance, supporting information uh, for my problems, and also digging into the literature search, um, you know, what have been done in that theoretical perspective. Um, and also do the writing. Um, and I must say that like within this like four months, I, I, it's sort of like we go back and forth between idea generation and also uh, finding um, the, uh, the empirical papers. 
um, and also writing. So it's so, sort of like several iterations of like the whole process. And uh, in the middle of it, I, we actually um, keep a very open mind attitude uh, because like, once you, uh, you have to start from somewhere. And so, uh, but we don't anchor from there. And so that sort of like in, uh, uh, help uh, uh, direct us to um, find, uh, sort of dig into the literature. But then the literature will inform us that certain things have been done and certain things uh, tell us that um, our ideas may not flow through. And so we sometimes have to backtrack and change. Uh, for instance, in my proposal, the explanatory mechanisms uh, has been changed several times, okay? And uh, so, um, so that's why starting early, it's, it's always good for me. Um, and uh, so lastly, um, the whole models and also the write-up uh, will best be uh, vetted by at least your teammates. So that's why, again, um, I started earlier because like, after several weeks, I, I, would, I would give my teammates my proposal and then they would, they would make comments and they would, they would tell me, oh, there are holes here, patch it, you have to patch it up. And, and they are like, you know, not so logical arguments here and there. So like, at the very first thing, um, run this through your teammates, if you have teammates, okay? Um, if you don't, uh, so it's extremely important to run through, uh, run your proposal through peers, okay? And uh, so because peers can really see and assess your proposal from a fresh eye, sometimes we are so, uh, so deeply dwell into our ideas, we think it, it, it works so nicely, but then it's actually sometimes like not very, like doesn't make sense. And so the peers, our peer review is very important. Um, and also lastly, um, uh, people really outside your disciplines uh, would, be, would also be very helpful. Uh, my proposal, for instance, uh, was vetted through by uh, the vice president office of uh, academic research. So uh, he gave comments on really like, you know, certain arguments and he would say like, you know, this is not clear, you need to elaborate. Okay, so uh, even like people who are not in your disciplines can, can give you helpful comments. And I think, um, I don't know actually, but like, you know, sometimes the panel members or even the reviewers may not be exactly in your disciplines. So uh, having people outside your disciplines reach through it once would be very good. Okay, um, I think that is um, the end of my um, presentation of my sharing today. And uh, I'd just like to thank all of you for listening. And uh, so just uh, a wrap up, like uh, you can still start your proposal, like, you know, it's not too late. Okay, thank you.